My name is Scott Hycar. I'm the Vice Pre President of Business Process and Chief Information Officer for Benchmark Electronics, uh, based here in uh, Tempe, Arizona. So um, I've been a CIO for you know a little over 20 years uh, across a multitude of companies. I really, I really came to the CIO role through uh, through the business process transformation track. I was an early uh, one of the earlier people in the United States that got involved in big ERP. I would say the technology that allowed me to really understand what it takes to to you know uh, manage the data in a corporation, manage the processes in a corporation, and so uh, through the work I did in implementing SAP as a consultant as well as an in industry, it really gave me the understanding of just you know how to take advantage of a corporation's data and how to turn that data into valuable information into insight. As I look back on my career, I think about uh, I think about the early days of ERP. We were all driving these big ERP initiatives in the 90s and companies, you know, whether you were at the time looking at SAP or Oracle or one of the others, you were like, boy, these, yeah, everybody's got to get these things done. And it was an interesting race, right? It was a technology race. Uh, and honestly, everybody that finished the race survived and, and some companies didn't finish the race, right? There was there were some huge epic failures in that. Uh, and as a CIO, I, I joined several companies as a result of a prior failure to really understand the change impact that you're driving when you think about these sort of massive structural changes to a company. Uh, you know, what, what the typical failure would be in those situations was you know, we didn't really think about, you know, how does this impact people? What's the sociological impact of change and sort of the new normal on people? And as I think about that across my career, I even, I even think about it today in this age of COVID and you know, how the world is going through this massive sociology change and how, you know, the change curve is the same all the time, right? I think about the, you know, there's always early adopters, there's always late adopters, and you're really trying to get the middle of the curve to be as productive at, you know, getting through that change curve as possible. When we can help a customer, sit down with a customer and really help them not only innovate their product with our engineering services, where we help a customer, you know, get their product designed, maybe think about getting it to market faster, maybe think about how we can design test processes to help them ramp those products. Uh, and then our back end, of, you know, back end of the company is, okay, can we manage your supply chain? Can we get you your parts where you need them? Can we do that in an effective and cost-effective way? And then, and then now with the world shifting, you know, as we as we sort of learn the new normal of COVID, um, it is no longer what it used to be, which is customers looking at us saying, I need the lowest cost possible manufacturing. They're looking for a service partner that can actually help them get their product to market faster, to manage some of this sort of geopolitical instability, uh, and to really think about how can I build my product in the market where my product gets consumed, and how do I de-risk some global issue happening where my you know global you know global supply chain might be impacted. Number one, for us, is um, you know security. Uh, you know, the, the nature of cyber, the nature of threat actors, the nature of uh, people that are looking to, uh, you know, exploit your, uh, you are or our customers IP, um, that bar continues to go up. I think there's a constant learning, very much evolving. Obviously those things are moving very quickly. I think in the back end of our business, it's collaboration and capabilities. I mean, the, the shift to collaborative work this year that was driven by the fact that we had, why we kept our factories open and, you know, our people were working in our factories because a lot of them are essential industries building medical products. We also shifted a lot of people to work remote. And if we can have people not be in our buildings and our factories, it's actually safer for the people that do need to be there to get their job done. And so the, the shift to collaborative technologies, we use a lot of Microsoft Teams, other platforms as well, has been, um, you know, when you see the, the, the rapid acceptance of that change curve, you're just amazed at the fact that, look, you know, to be resilient, you know, society has figured out how to keep working. And we've continued to figure, and we figured out how to successfully work remote. I aspire to, uh, you know, uh, emulate work in the servant leader model. Um, you know, the the things my mentors taught me were to be, especially in this role of CIO, to be uh, to be curious, uh, to always be uh, an open learner. Uh, you know, to uh, inspire that curiosity in your team. We as CIOs need to be um, just the most excited and passionate people about change. And, you know, looking at a company and going, boy, I'm not just deploying technology or upgrading something or installing something. I'm using this event to create a change in the behavior of the company, to create a change in the company's ability to make decisions. And so you really have to be passionate about change. 
You have to be curious about the next wave of technologies uh, that are emerging and always sort of looking out there at what could be the next thing that could create, you know, create value in the company that you're in.